I'm John Dixon with Garage Gurus and today we're going to be talking about volumetric efficiency testing. We're going to be using this Chevy Impala here and this Snap-on Veris scan tool to go ahead and take some readings. But first let's talk about what is volumetric efficiency. Well volumetric efficiency is the a measurement of the engine's ability to breathe and use air. So we can look at a lot of engine concerns all at once just by doing this test. We can look at things such as intake restrictions, exhaust flow restrictions, and base engine problems like jump cam timing and things like that will all show themselves in our results. So we're going to go out for a drive with the Impala in a little bit and capture some data. But before we do, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how to set up your scan tool to capture this data. So let's take a look. So we're going to go into um, the engine section, of course. Uh, this one does not have the air pump. And we're going to go into the uh, data display right here. Engine data. And we have a lot of different data pits to look at. Uh, as you probably know, your scan tool updates a lot quicker when you look at less. Plus, it's a little easier on the eyes. So we're going to click on custom right here and deselect all of these. And then we're going to go and we're going to select... Um, IAT, intake air temp, engine speed, and mass airflow. And for this test, uh, as you're going to see when we get back from the test drive, it's going to be uh, really good to look at it in graph view. It's just a lot easier to manipulate the data. Uh, so we've got the data right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start up the car. So I want to talk to you a little bit about qualifying your mass airflow reading. This test and the math that we're going to do later in the video are really dependent on having an accurate reading from the mass airflow sensor. So we want to make sure that's right. So let me start the car and get it warmed up and we'll take a look. All right, so we went ahead and got the engine warmed up on the Impala uh, so that we can go ahead and qualify the mass airflow sensor. What I mean by qualifying the mass airflow sensor is this testing and all the math that we do is dependent on getting good data from that. And you've probably done a math equation before and been off a little bit on one variable and then you multiply and divide by it, and then pretty soon your results don't mean anything. To qualify the math, what, what we're looking for is about one gram per second of airflow with the engine warmed up at idle with all the loads turned off, about one gram per second per liter of engine size. So this 3.6 liter in this Impala should have about 3.6, and you can go up maybe another half a liter or so uh, in engine size at idle. So I went ahead and warmed up the engine and paused the data and you can see that we're um, between like 4.04 at the minimum and 4.1 uh, is where I paused it at. So for a 3.6 liter engine, that's in line. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take a second technician with me so he can hold the scanner and pause it for me. You should do that and make sure you have a safe area uh, to accelerate the vehicle because we need to go pretty much wide open throttle and go through a one to two, first to second gear shift. Uh, so I'm gonna have the technician pause that, and then we're gonna capture that data and bring it back, and we'll talk about it briefly. And then I'm gonna walk you through the math so that we can actually calculate the volumetric efficiency of this engine. Okay, so we're back from the test drive and we've captured our data. So if you just look at the scanner screen right here, this is just paused during the scanner movie. Um, the second technician in the car with me just paused it right after. You can see the peak in RPM. So I just want to rewind the data just a little bit and I'm looking to get the blue cursor that's on the edge of the screen in line with the peak. Uh, RPM because that's going to be of course where our maximum airflow is and so these are going to be the three pieces of input for our equation 6,557 RPM, 221.12 grams per second of airflow and 75 degrees of Fahrenheit intake air temp which is going to be converted to Kelvin but you'll see all that in a minute when we do the math. Okay, so now I'm going to take you through this equation and the math that we need to do in order to figure out our volumetric efficiency. So here's our equation. Volumetric efficiency equals the mass airflow rate divided by 
the RPM times D for density, which we're going to calculate on a separate page here in a second, multiplied by the engine displacement in liters divided by 120. Uh, why 120? Well, 120 is a constant that converts minutes to seconds and it accounts for two engine revolutions for every cycle. Now let's go ahead and calculate D. So D is the density of air in kilograms per meters cubed. The way we get that is we take the barometric air pressure in Pascals, the actual, uh, not corrected. 287 is our gas constant, and then IAT is going to be the intake air temperature in Kelvin. It's really hard to get IAT reading in Kelvin on the scanner, so we're just going to convert that manually. So we're going to look up the barometric pressure on a weather app. Here in Detroit today, the pressure is 29.81 inches of mercury. To get the pressure in pascals, all we need to do is multiply by 3,386.39. That equals 101,151.469. Now we need the temperature in Kelvin. The scanner reads out in Fahrenheit, so we take uh, the temperature in Fahrenheit, add 459.67, and multiply by 5 over 9. So we simplify that to uh, 75 plus 459 times 0.555556 or 534 times 0.55556. So our temperature in Kelvin equals 297.04. So now we finish with our equation for density. Density equals our pressure, which is 101,151.469, divided by our gas constant of 287 times 297.04 degrees Kelvin. Simplify that out, we got 101,151.469 divided by 85,250.48. We come up with our D density of 1.19 kilograms per meters cubed. So now that we've got that all straightened out, we can go back to our VE formula. Okay, so our volumetric efficiency is going to be our mass airflow rate of 221.12 grams per second that we measured with the scan tool during the test drive, divided by our peak RPM at that math reading, which was 6,557, multiplied by D, which we just calculated, of 1.19 kilograms per meters cubed, multiplied by our engine displacement in liters of 3.6, divided by 120. And just make sure you're following order of operations here and working your parentheses through in the right order. Um, we simplify that once, we get 221.12 grams per second MAF over 65.57 times 1.19 times 0.03. Simplified again is 221.12 divided by 234.08. We do the final division on that. We get a volumetric efficiency of 0.944 which means the volumetric efficiency of this engine is 94%. Okay, so after a few pages of math, we got to 94%. Now, some of you are probably out there watching and, and you've already realized that yes, there are some calculators, there are some apps out there that will do this math for you. But I thought that some of you might be interested and geek out and like seeing where all, of the, all this stuff comes from. So, Anyway, like you saw, we got down to 94%. This engine here has VVT, GDI, pretty much all the latest and greatest technology. If you're working on some older engines, maybe they're push rod, it's got a single cam in block, it's got static cam timing, you're gonna be a little bit lower. You might be in the 80 to 85% range, okay? Uh, you'll have to do some testing on similar platforms and kind of build your own case as far as what's good on which platform. Uh, but I've found most of these 3.6 on the later GMs are in the 92 to 94% range. So if you're in the 60s or 70s, what's wrong? Well, you might have an intake restriction, you might have an exhaust restriction. You're gonna have to do further testing, use your scan tool, use some other tests uh, to figure out where that came from. So I hope this tech tip on volumetric efficiency has helped you out. Um, and gives you some more resources for engine testing. For more information, subscribe to our channel and visit us at garagegurus.tech.